I'm going to talk about Cubes. Uh, Cubes is a deployment tool built specifically for Kubernetes. And what it does is it automates pretty much the three essential steps you need in order to uh, get your application running on Kubernetes cluster. Those three steps are usually you build a Docker image because you want to deploy your, your own application. And then uh, number two, uh, you um, are going to build YML files that is going to actually use that Docker image. So Cubes will do that for you also. And then you have to run Cube Control apply, applying those YML files. And that that's what tells the uh, Kubernetes cluster what it needs to create. Okay. So these three main steps are essentially automated by one command called Cubes Deploy. Cubes Deploy will do one, two, and three. And uh, here's a quick start that shows how to install the tool, just gem install cubes. And then it kind of takes a uh, you through a quick tutorial here where it shows you all you have to do is really create an empty directory and then that's actually enough to get started. Then here it's just using a, a repo variable where it's the uh, ECR repo here, but you can use ECR, GCR, ACR, Docker Hub, you can use whatever a registry you have access to. Then you run cubes init, which is going to generate the starter template structure. And you pass it app and then the repo here, which again is a variable. And you can see it builds kind of these files here. And essentially the main things we're going to deploy is the deployment and the service here. Also namespace, but we're going to focus on the deployment. And then uh, you just run cubes deploy and you can see that it calls docker build here. So that's one good thing about cubes. It actually spits out what it's running. So you can see what it's doing. So it's gonna call cubes uh, docker build here to build the image, then docker push to push the image up the registry. Then it says it's gonna compile all the doc cube resource files to the doc cubes output folder. And then it simply goes through and calls cube control apply to the individual files uh, in the proper order. So it creates the namespace first, then the service and deployment, because you can't create the service and deployment unless you have the namespace available first. Um, uh, by default, it will create a namespace that matches um, this dash dash app demo, but you can actually override that with a dash dash namespace. And if you actually use dash dash namespace default, then it won't create a namespace at all because the default namespace already exists. Okay, um, there are some nice conveniences uh, to cubes. If you call cubes git, it will just kind of list all the resources that's associated with this actually application that was created by cubes. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a demo of this. Uh, cubes exec is one of my favorite commands. It's going to hop into the uh, deployment's first pod and the first container within there. So then you don't have to actually run uh, cube control exec dash T and then copy and paste the uh, pod name over. Um, so it kind of automates uh, and spares you from copy and paste in there. Then cubes logs, which just logs all the uh, logs from the deployment. Uh, there are more features to cubes like um, ordering. I kind of covered a little bit layering. It allows you to uh, dry up your code and use the same uh, kind of Kubernetes YML definitions to build multiple environments like dev and prod uh, with the same file and kind of keep things dry and, and really keep duplication to a minimal. Then uh, you can actually override um, or you could decorate what CLI arguments are passed to either cube, the cube, C, cube control commands or the Docker commands actually. And you can actually run hooks before and after each of the commands. So you have a, a decent amount of configuration uh, configurability here. And there is customized support too if you do that. But again, Cubes does its own kind of version of layering. But you are used to customize and kind of offers out also. Here are the intro docs. The intro docs pretty much covers exactly what I just said. Uh, it does these three steps, builds the Docker image, compiles the YML files, and then runs cube control apply in the proper order. Uh, how cubes work, let's actually cover that real quickly. Cubes works by basically building Docker image, right? And, and then um, compiling files. But you can see here, you actually call the um, commands individually. So if you want it more kind of control over it, you can just go cubes docker build, cubes docker push, and cubes compile, uh, compile. And that essentially gets you down here to where you can call cube uh, control apply directly. Now, well, I want to point one thing out. If you call cube control uh, apply directly, you should make sure you create uh, all your resources in the right order, like the namespace first. Uh, cubes apply will actually do that for you and order it properly. And if you're wondering whether or not uh, that control is going to work, you can always customize the ordering of, of the, uh, all, all, all the cube um, control applies there, okay? So that covers a decent introduction of this, hopefully. And so now I'm going to take you through a quick demo. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make... Um, oh, this demo is also kind of available by this, this getting started right here. What kind of takes you through uh, all the individual steps and even shows you kind of how to update uh, the, the, the cube uh, Brunette, Kubernetes resources you just created. But I'm just going to kind of go through the demo here. Okay, so I'm making an empty directory. I cd in the empty uh, directory. 
Now I'm just echo, uh, so you can see I have a, um, the ECR repo in that uh, bash variable there. Now I'm just going to go cubes init um, app demo uh, repo dollar sign repo. So that's going to generate a bunch of files. And you can see the files they generate, they generate this Docker file too. So first question is like, what's in this Docker file, right? So let's open up the Docker file and take a look real quick. This Docker file uh, is a simple Nginx uh, uh, image here and just starts up Nginx. So we're going to be deploying Nginx here. If your project already has a Docker file, cubes in it, it's not going to override it. It's just going to leave that as is. Let's assume you're, you want to use that one. Uh, and then create all these other files in here in the uh, cubes.cubes .cubes folder here. And the one we're going to focus on is kind of deployment here and, and service, but mainly deployment. So let's actually open up deployment. Let's just go through it right here. Uh, resources, and you can look at web, and you can look at deployment. They're all out. So here's the deployment. So it's creating the deployment, and I want to point out one thing. You see this uh, built image? That's like a helper method. It's a templating. Uh, so cubes uh, basically it provides you or gives you access to a templating language. And this is actually a built-in helper that's going to reference the Docker image that we're building. So this is why you don't have to kind of manually uh, replace that yourself. OK, so now that's all done, let's just actually run cubes deploy and then watch it happen. So see, cubes build is being called. And then cubes. Uh, I'm sorry, not cubes build. Docker build is being uh, called to build the image. And you can see it generate kind of a timestamp, the image name, everything. Then you can see it doing Docker push. So it pushes the image up and then it compiles the resources, dot cubes resources files, and then compiles to dot cubes output. And then it applies uh, all the resources that were compiled down into, uh, you know, in the right order here. Create a namespace, then create a uh, service, then deployment. Now, uh, a good command is cubes git. Cubes git is going to show you all the resources that were created by the cubes deploy, the namespace, the deployment, and the service. And it does one additional thing. It actually uh, grabs the deployment, and then it lists all the pods associated with the deployment. OK, so that's a nice and convenient. Now, if you can do the same thing right, with cube control git all. But notice, I'm in the default namespace right now. So I'm not going to actually see anything. I got to switch over namespace. I just want to show that. So I'm going to switch over to demo namespace, which was kind of created with that deploy. Now I do that cube get all. Now I can see all the researchers that I expected to see. Uh, now cubes get again, just so you, we can see the commands or, or we can see the difference there. It's kind of pretty much kind of similar output there. Now here's the kind of cool command, cubes exec, okay? If I do a cubes exec, what does it do? It's actually going to find the uh, latest container associated with the deployment and hop right in there. So I didn't have to kind of copy and paste there. I just hop right in. So let's test if this is working. Get localhost uh, and then grab for title. Say so welcome to Nginx. So that's kind of good. Let's also go ahead and, um, you know, uh, curl the uh, service endpoint. So that's actually working too. And let's actually curl actually a web dot uh, demo, uh, right? And since I'm actually in the demo namespace, I can just actually curl web too. So all those kind of work right there, right? Off the bat. Okay. So uh, since that's working, I'm gonna exit out. I'm gonna cubes logs to show you another command. Now this is gonna show me all the logs associated with deployment. Now to kind of kind of test this, I'm gonna actually open up another terminal here. Drag this up here, cd into back demo, go cubes exec to hop back into the container again. Then I'm gonna actually just curl localhost again. And look, look, notice I didn't have to again copy and paste. I just, it, you know, it, it did kind of what uh, generally, it, it kept with the flow. So that's, that's cool. Okay, so uh, I curl nginx, and while I curl nginx, you can kind of see down there that it was telling the logs right there. I just want to demonstrate that. So, okay, so we're gonna hop back out now. Uh, we're gonna hop back out of this container. Uh, uh, or the logs command here, control C that. And let's actually uh, now kind of show you a little bit of layering. So this deployment right here, uh, it has replicas here, uh, but actually it's kind of be overridden by this replica right here. So, okay, so I'm gonna change this and um, we're gonna go and then we're gonna go uh, cubes deploy. Okay, uh, actually we don't need to deploy. We just, because we don't really need to build a new image, we're gonna just go cubes apply and then run the only last command. So watch what happens here. It basically applies all the resources once again, and then you can see the only one that changed was configured was this uh, deployment. But you could also just, again, you could run it directly if you want to. So you could just done this, you could have done the cubes uh, like apply directly, or you could actually, you could also do this way, uh, apply web deployment. And then it's actually gonna, and it's gonna know to only uh, scope it to apply and deployment. These are all in change, right? So now I'm just gonna do cubes git again. So we're gonna see two, uh, two containers now. There you go. So that's kind of working. We do a cubes exec again. It's gonna jump in the latest container, which is like 
only 29 seconds old here. So you see these numbers match. It always kind of jumps in the latest container there. That's the, the, the current flow. Okay, so uh, now I just want to show you one last command. So I'm going to show you cubes delete. So cubes delete, let's clean up everything. The cool thing about this is actually it's going to tell you what, it's, what the commands is going to run before it, uh, it's going to run it. It's showing you that it's going to do a cubes delete deployment service and then namespace. Notice how namespace comes at the end. It does it in the reverse order. So that way it, it deletes everything cleanly. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything and we're going to get back to where we were. And then the last part right here is just deleting namespace. And I, I believe Kubernetes actually verifies that everything's deleted. So that's why it takes a little longer. But that's it. Uh, let's just kind of verify now uh, that uh, everything has been deleted. There, that's it. Okay. Uh, so that covers pretty much uh, the Cubes deployment tool. Here are the getting started sites, um, documentation site. And here is, uh, yeah, so you should check this out. Uh, hopefully uh, that was helpful and you enjoyed this video. Cheers.